Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be showcasing eight guns that want you dead in Borderlands 3. Some weapons just don't respect their wielder and will put you in just as much danger as your enemies, sometimes even more. These weapons are some of the best in the game, others some of the worst. And I'll be letting you know where you can get each one, explain what they do, and how you can avoid tasting your own medicine, if at all possible. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to, or you could even follow me on Twitter, and do let me know in the comments if there's any other weapons that you should be wary of using, and let's crack into it. We open this list of 7 weapons that are out to kill you in Borderlands 3 with the Pain is Power, or the Embrace of the Pain. They're pretty much identical versions of the same weapon that can only come in fire, and can be obtained from the most handsomest man on Pandora, Hot Carl, you fight around here in Devil's Razor. Both these weapons are references to Krieg from Borderlands 2 with their red text, It hurts, ha 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 ha, it hurts and nobody kills me but me, summed up through their unique effect of setting you on fire whenever they overheat. Now igniting yourself may not sound like a good idea, and it's not, but you used to be able to get away with it and couple that effect with an elemental protector artifact for some serious damage, but now you'll fry yourself faster than a quail's egg in a furnace. The problem is caused through mayhem weapon scaling, which also buffs its self damage having you insta down in less than a second after overheating. On Mayhem Zero it's not as bad, but go up those Mayhem levels and you're literally toast. It's a shame because they are strong weapons with cool effects that you can take advantage of, but you simply can't be expected to survive while using them. It's funny because Gearbox actually buffed them since Mayhem 2.0 released, but never addressed the problem, leaving these weapons to continually gather dust. Next up, the Complex Root, a top tier Maliwan sniper rifle which can be obtained the fastest from Lanny Dixon, who you fight around here in Ashfall Peaks as part of the Bounty of Blood DLC. It was pretty apparent when this weapon launched that there was something seriously wrong, but equally devastating whenever it was in the hands of the one they call Moat. No matter how you spec her, this gun would find a way to destroy you and everything on screen at the same time. This gun calculates damage a little differently, firing elemental beams which trigger massive explosions both along the flight path and at the point of contact. It's these which Moe's can't get away from, and when specced into tall cross promotion, each blast gets amplified to the nth degree. It's insanely deadly, but this gun is well worth it for the sheer destruction it causes. To avoid downing yourself, you need to only deal shock or radiation damage throughout your build, not just with the weapon, and equip a transformer or a red suit to protect yourself, so skills like fire in the skag den are a no go. Zane with the Hustler class mod has the same issues, but with a lack of elemental skills or purely through duct tape mod and a cryo setup, can comfortably avoid the bright lights to stay on his feet. Now for the Shrieking Devil, an elemental Nova shotgun which has an increased chance to drop from Blinding Banshee, who you fight around here in Desolation's Edge. The Shrieking Devil is a gun that has you screaming so loud your lungs explode, killing you and everything around you. It's essentially your final words before you die because each time you pull that trigger, that's you gone. It has incredibly short range, but does do some surprising amounts of damage, and if you manage to time it just right, you'll get an auto second wind each time you scream someone to death. That doesn't always work though, leaving you all alone as the colours fade and your energy drains. The only way to avoid straight up ending yourself with this gun is to match elements with the transformer or red suit, and that turns into a pretty nice ride of sonic booming enemies into oblivion. Moving on to the Globetrotter, an elemental COV launcher that can only be obtained by defeating Scourge the Invincible at the end of the Guardian takedown. The Globetrotter trots the globe looking for people to kill, not caring if you're one of them. 
It fires flavoured discs that zip along the floor, bouncing off surfaces before launching into the air not once but twice after contacting an enemy. It deals incredible damage, but not without sharing some of that with you, as those discs are both deadly and extremely unpredictable. Its fire rate is high, allowing you to send out swarms of them that will quickly carve up the competition. You can cut down on the likelihood of death by grabbing a x3 version as opposed to the x6, but where's the fun in that? It's probably rated less as a top tier weapon due to the danger it grants its wielder, but that doesn't stop it from being a seriously powerful gun while also valuing your ammo pool. Time now for the Pestilence, an always radiation COV pistol that has an increased chance to drop from Celestro around here in the Tazendere ruins. On the surface, the Pestilence is just a regular unharmful weapon until you hold that trigger down for too long and it explodes in your face. The issue is the same here as it is with the Embrace of the Pain and the Pain is Power, where the damage from the blast is scaled dramatically with mayhem levels, causing you to drop to the floor whenever it overheats. You can't use it like you would a normal weapon, but at the very least you can go out with a bang and take out some COV while you're at it. Unlike its deadly counterparts, you can couple it with a red suit to save you from your self-explosion and use the dot applied to trigger an elemental projector artifact, which is one way to turn a negative into a positive. Next up is the Handsome Jackhammer, a Hyperion SMG that can come in all the elements, including none, and has an increased chance to drop from Handsome Jackie, who you fight around here in Skywell 27. The Handsome Jackhammer is essentially a hybrid weapon, combining the effects from both Hyperion and Tedior. Reloading won't see you insert a new mag, but instead throw away your entire weapon, which will spin and bounce around while shooting, releasing a Nova each time it bounces. As its name suggests, like a jackhammer, it typically bounces straight up and down, but when bouncing off things, its reload effect gets incredibly unpredictable. That is where the hard hat and safety goggles go out the window, with luck the only thing that will save you from meeting your maker. Having it slam onto your toes is so painful that you will enter fight for your life and you'll need to be on your toes if you want to stop that from happening. It's unfortunate that its reload effect is so dangerous because you should be encouraged to use it more often, but it's just not worth the risk. The last weapon that is out to kill you in Borderlands 3 is Barrels, no, the Devil's Foursome which can come in any element and has an increased chance to drop from the Psycho Billies, who you fight around here under the waterfall in the Ambermar. Most of the Vault Hunters won't see inadvertent death with this one, but play the wrong way and you'll see it all the time. Of course, with an explosive weapon, Mose is the likely culprit, and unfortunately death is hard to avoid. It all comes down to its firing pattern, which sees three projectiles arc out at right angles, before meeting in the middle and exploding. The distance where they converge is always the same, and it's a little too close for comfort. Having a Devil's Foursome with a large splash damage radius or getting an unlucky proc of Torg cross promotion will see you get blown apart. It makes it incredibly difficult to use this weapon safely, and you should be using it because it is a great gun. The general rule of thumb for me with this one is to always be walking away from your explosions, like they do in the movies, but not with your back turned. That way you can narrowly avoid those massive shockwaves that often trigger. Same player specced into a racer should also be careful with this gun, which is capable of producing explosive spectacles rarely matched in the Borderlands. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of 7 weapons that you need to be careful of using in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.